thank you for the Holy Spirit that will give me utterance that I may open my mouth boldly and speak boldly as I ought to speak and make known the mysteries of the gospel to those who are here tonight and for those of who are, are looking at us and viewing us on Periscope. Father, I thank you right now that you give the people hearing ears to hear and hearts to understand the revelation knowledge of your divine will and your divine plan for them as members of the body of Christ. And Father, I thank you for doing it because I'm asking that which is according to your will. Now, Satan, I render you notice you'll not hinder any person in the sound of, sound of my voice from hearing or receiving the word of God, for I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ. And now, Holy Spirit, Spirit, have free course throughout this service to minister to the hearts of the people here tonight and those who are listening on Periscope or watching on Periscope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. You remember we started off at the beginning of our series called How to Change Your Circumstances by Changing Your Mind. How to change your circumstances by changing your mind. We started off a violation of scripture in the book of uh, Isaiah. recording what about now praise God I must have accidentally turned it off all right praise the Lord okay well getting back to our lesson now I we thought we said uh, a couple of weeks ago in the beginning of this series that most people on the earth along with many Christians have thoughts that are totally contrary to God's thoughts and God's ways for example we found that that many people think that God does not think or care about them or how they're living on the earth on this earth we saw talked about also that there are others who think that being successful and prospering in life prosperous in life determines their self-worth however we found from the scriptures that in the kingdom of God a man's self-worth is not determined by the abundance of the things that he possesses well praise God that's true so because God's thoughts are contrary contrary are totally opposite from the thoughts of man here on the earth God doesn't think like we think God doesn't act like we act his thoughts are totally contrary to our thoughts. And that's why the Bible instructs us as Christians in the book of Romans, the 12th chapter, verses 1 and 2. He says, be not conformed, or verse 2, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God for your life. It's unfortunate that many Christians have not caught on to God's instructions for them of what their responsibility is in changing their mind so that their circumstances in life can be changed. You know, Jesus said in John 10:10, 10, 10, he says, the thief cometh but to steal, to kill and destroy. But Jesus says, I come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. 
Now, an abundant life is not just a little bit, a little dab of do you, or just a little bit for me and my four and no more. Now, when Jesus says, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly, he was talking about not only having for me and my four, but enough to give out and help others and be a blessing to others. In fact, that's God's intent. His intent is to prosper his children so that his goodness be manifested to the world. See, it's his will for you to have live good. It's his will for you to prosper. It's his will for you to walk in divine health. It's his will for you to overcome in every circumstance in life. Why? Because he loves his children. You remember the scriptures and Matthew says, fear not little flock for it is a father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. You see, it's God's good pleasure to give you everything that's in the kingdom. Everything that pertains to life and godliness, the Bible says, has already been given to the Christian. But we have a responsibility so that we can enjoy the abundant life that Jesus came to the earth and bought already. He's already died. He was already crucified, went to hell, and was already resurrected from the dead. And he's now seated at the right hand throne of God. And in John 10, 10, he says, the thief cometh, which is the devil, to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus says, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Well, did Jesus bring life and life more abundantly? Emphatically, he has. It's already been done. Abundant life is available for every individual on the earth that is ready to receive it, that is willing to receive it. Jesus has already provided. However, we have a responsibility. We have our part, and God has his part. Romans, the 12th chapter, verse number uh, uh, 2 says, God speaking to us, actually verse number 1, he says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies unto God as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto him, which is your spiritual worship. Now, it doesn't say that in the King James Version. It says, which is your reasonable service. In fact, I'm going to turn over there, praise God, even though I have it down on the side of me. I just wanted to read it again because I'm always going back over reading the Bible over and over again because the Bible says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It never says faith comes by having heard. Can you say amen? Now listen, he says in verse number one, Romans the 12th chapter, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you, the individual, the Christian, because the Bible was not written to sinners, the Bible was written to Christians. It is the Christian's instructions, Bob, instruction manual. Hallelujah. Somebody said the word Bible, B-I-B-L-E. You probably know what it means already. The acronym they use, B-I-B-L-E, B -I -B -L -E, the Bible, basic instructions before leaving earth. And they are basic instructions because there are some things, some deep things about the kingdom of God that we will never learn and never come into the revelation of until we get to heaven. Because we see in the glass darkly. But then when we see him face to face, then we, should be, we'll, we will know all things. We'll be taught all things. Can you say amen? Now listen, he says in verse 2, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. How, God? He says, by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove, your, prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You know, that's God's instruction for the believer. His instruction for you so that you can change your circumstances by going through the process of changing your mind is that you must be renewed. You must renew your mind. He says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. I, actually, I like to use the illustration. There was a toy, and I guess they're still out today, but they were really popular back in, I've guessed, around in the 1990s or 1980s. It was called Transformers. It came after the movie that was, that was created called Transformers. And these Transformers were little trucks or little fire trucks or little race cars. And what these little toys were able to do when they created those in the manufacturing company, Toys or Us and whoever, Mom, Mattel, and the little kid can get these trucks and they can switch it and they can transform the trucks or the car into a robot. Well, that was the, the, the theme of the movie, movie called Transformers. It was these robots that can change themselves to look like a car, to disguise themselves. Well, God tells us that he wants us to be transformed. Transform. 
You see, when we come into the kingdom of God, we're disguised and we're covered and we live after the flesh and we live at the carnal mind. We live at the thoughts that we had before we came into the kingdom of God. Thoughts that were contrary to the thoughts of God. <coughs> doing things different from the way, doing things our way, which, were, which is, was different from the ways of God. And so God tells us that he says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth and shall not return to me void. Well, excuse me, not that verse of scripture, but the one says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither my ways your ways. And as the heavens are high above the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And so he tells us in Romans, the 12th chapter, verse 2, that we're not to be conformed to the world's way of thinking, acting, and living. But we're to be transformed. That is to change from what you look like and act like and thought like and talk like and live like to the way that God's ways, the way that God wants you to live, the way God wants you to talk, the way God wants you to act, to be transformed, he says, by the renewing of your mind. So hence, we've been teaching a lesson called How to Change Your Circumstances by Changing Your Mind. We talked about last week that God could not bring Jesus Oh, excuse me, we talked about how our lives are choice-driven, not wish or hope-driven. We found out that we must make the choices that would enable God to change the bad or negative circumstances in our lives on this earth. We found out in Matthew 13, chapter, verses 53 to 58, that, that Jesus went into his own hometown, and there he wanted to do the same great works that he did in other places, such as in Canaan, in Judea, and in Samaria, and the different places that he went to. But when he got to his own hometown, the Bible says that he could do no mighty works. Why? And it says in the scriptures, because of their unbelief. If you go and read there in Matthew, the 13th chapter, Mark, the 6th chapter, you'll find out in Mark, the 6th chapter, that Jesus, he tells us, Mark writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, writing the same incident that Matthew wrote, but Mark brings out a revelation that Matthew does, and he says that when Jesus was in his own town, he could do no mighty work to save. He healed a few sick folks, and the Bible says in the next chapter, chapter 7, verse 1, that he went about the towns outside his hometown in Nazareth, going about teaching the Word of God. So the cure for unbelief the cure for changing our minds so we can change our circumstances is the teaching of the Word of God. So we've been teaching on the, word, on, the, on the subject of how to change your circumstances by changing your mind. Now, unless we're willing to allow God's Word to change the way that we think, we will never be able to change the adverse circumstances in our lives. We talked about that God's way for changing our circumstance in life from failure to success, from poverty to riches, from sickness to health, is by first persuading us to change how we believe and how we think. We believe and think based upon our core beliefs. So if our believing is wrong, our thinking and decision making will also. Did you get that? Let me say it again. We believe and think based upon our core beliefs. So if our believing is wrong, our thinking and our decision making will also be wrong or be made with wrong decisions or wrong choices. Now, we talked about our core belief system was established by through four factors. We said number one, through our environment. Number two, through reputable authority figure or figures. We said number three, through repetitions information. And we said through number four, through our personal experience. Now, we shared scriptures about uh, either one of those. You have to go online and uh, look at our website.